In our earlier program, we had talked about subsistence, agriculture, craft and technology. We had seen that trade, though used very loosely by archaeologists, cannot be understood as we currently understand it. In this program, we shall deal with architectural patterns, the Indus script, religion and social organizations. Firstly, we deal with urban form, architecture and town planning. Now, I think from school days onwards, you are aware of those pictures of Harappa and Mohenjo-daro which are given in textbooks. Now, let us see how far those ideas match with what you are going to learn today. There are certain misconceptions about Harappan town planning which we would like to deal with first. Firstly, it uh, was maintained that all Harappan towns were built of baked brick. But you find that apart from baked brick, mud and mud brick constructions were also there. So, it was not just baked brick. Then the general uh, idea was that all Harappan cities are basically divided into two parts, the Acropolis or the citadel to the west and the lower living areas of the community on the other side. Now this kind of segregation of space is not found in all the Harappan sites. For example, at sites like Aladino, Amri, Ropar, Rojdi, Lothal, Hulas, you do not find such a segregation of uh, space. This you only find in Mohenjadaro, Harappa and Kalibankar. The third misconception that was there was that all the cities, all the urban centers show a uniform grid, grid planning. Now, uh, grid planning is seen in uh, Mohenjadaro, it, in uh, Nausharo. But uh, there may not be such uh, regular planning as has been pointed out. For example, Posel points out that in case of Mohenjadaro, the first street which was considered as the north-south thoroughfare can be made out. The second street can be confirmed, but the northern and southern east-west streets may not be confirmed through archaeological evidence. Then inside the major blocks of many of these streets, there are some dog legs and dead ends. So the streets were not as well aligned as it was made out to be. Also it is uh, seen that uh, many of these streets and avenues which are called, they have these walls and these walls are pinching in on the streets and avenues. And the and these are getting narrower and narrower. Despite these imperfections, definitely the town planning and architectural components were absolutely remarkable. There is no doubt about that. And Janssen, who has, elabor who has worked elaborately on the urban architecture, points out uh, to a remarkable aspect that is the construction of platforms. Now, another thing that we are finding in Harappan town planning is the uh, brick lined wells. Now the layout of many of these wells were done when the original platform was laid out. And this, these wells continued unchanged throughout the mature Harappan phase. They show a remarkable continuity. Now the area covered by each well and the average distance between each of these wells is consistent. Th therefore, pointing to this fantastic planning of the Harappans. Then we come across this elaborate drainage system for which you have ample evidence from Harappa, Mohenjadaro, Kalibangan, Nausharo, Lothal and many of these sites. At Mohenjadaro, you have drains at all levels of the sites. You not only have street drains, but also drainage system in the houses, in the domestic space which was connected to the street trains. This is the bathing facility found in Mohenjadaro. Some say that it was for ritual bath, others say that it was for elites only and still others have doubts about both these conjectures. Nevertheless, it indicates the advanced nature of a civilization. What is this great bath? 
you are all familiar with visuals of the great power. It is basically a water tank where uh, which is enclosed which was enclosed by um, uh, brick paved uh, walls, brick paved uh, galleries and brick paved uh, um, colonnades. Now, this huge tank was 12 into uh, had an area of 12 into 7 meters and a depth of almost 2.4 meters. On the outside of the tank you had uh, one had a covering of about 3 centimeter thick of bitumen to make it waterproof. Then we come across two staircases from opposite sides of the great path leading to the bottom of the tank. So, this is very interesting this entire structure architecture of the great path. There were rooms on the, uh, on the uh, north and east of the great path and in one of the rooms there was a well which was possibly that was the source of water for the great path and this water was changed from time to time. So, from the nature of its architecture from the nature of its planning it is possible that it was meant for some special ritualistic purpose. Now, when you come to the domestic structures Mohenjo-daro definitely gives the best example. We can how can we talk about these houses? Archaeologists have talked about these houses which consist of uh, rooms irregularly spaced closing in on one or more than one courtyards. Now, these courtyards were used for more than one purpose. Collection of workshop debris, manufacturing debris have been made from part of the courtyards which so uh, some kind of household production may have carried out there and this was also used for cooking purposes. The houses were very solidly built. The walls were uh, more than uh, more than a meter a meter to about 2 meters thick. Then you come across uh, doors and windows of course, windows the construction of windows it is doubtful all the talk some scholars have talked about it. And you hear about staircases people talk about these staircases which lead up to possibly an upper story. So, we can you can make out that you are one is getting well constructed houses. A large house of nearly 300 square meters would have about 20 rooms uh, closing in on a courtyard. Now, apart from these houses you come across 16 two room quarters which were called the coolie lines by Wheeler. Now, apart from these domestic houses we also or domestic structures we also come across some special purpose buildings. Now, I have already mentioned uh, initially that uh, about the segregation of space of these urban centers that often Acropolis to the west where you have or Acropolis or Citadel to the west and the lower town. So, we have already seen that such segregation of space is not there at all the sites. Now, what is this citadel? It was basically um, uh, meant for it was basically a fortress adjoining the settlements and it was meant for defense purposes. Now, as I already mentioned that this segregation of space was not noticed everywhere. At Mohenjo-daro, Mithathal and Kalibangan you see such a segregation of space you do not see it in Harappan, Harappa, Banavali or Lothal. Now, let us take of Mohenjo-daro which is the most well recorded here. The citadel here enclosed certain high walls and towers and we come across these special buildings within this citadel. You all know about the great path about the pillared hall elite residences and the granary. Now, close to the great bath one comes across this huge platform on which there are these 27 smaller plinths separated by narrow passages and arranged in 3 rows of 9 each. From the nature of these uh, structure and uh, seeing a similar structure at Harappa people archaeologists have come to the conclusion that this is the granary. Another important structure is the pillared hall. There are 20 thick pillars arranged in 4 rows of 5 each. 
So this has been called the palace of the elites basically. This is what the uh, Harappan citadel and these structures looked like. Now if we look into the planning of these of the other cities we, f we see that Harappa uh, also had a lower town and a citadel. The citadel had granary and uh, some two gateways. Kalibangan was rebuilt completely during the mature Harappan period. Chanhudaro can be called as a lower quarter as one of the lesser quarters of Manjadaro. There you have ample evidence of bead working and Lothal has been mentioned as a port with a dockyard. There also you are which is controversial there also you are finding evidence of different craft working. Now one of the most spectacular discoveries of recent times is the site of Dholavira and the great run of Kutch which spreads over an area of 60 hectares. Here too you have the citadel with an outer court and which is connected to the middle town. All are bounded within this open walled system where in one place you have the lower town. So here also in Dholavira also you find all features of Harappan town planning. Most of these buildings and the structures walls they were made of mud brick. Inside the uh, citadel inside the town one finds that there is a tank a water tank which was lined by stones and it had lime plaster. So this in brief is giving you an idea of the urban form planning the architectural pattern of the Harappan system and I tried to point out the differences between the major cities how Mohenjadaro is often taken as the type site and how there are diff other sites which do not always fall into this pattern. But there are certain unitary features, certain cohesive features of urban planning which ties Harappa. Now the next aspect that we take up is the Harappan script. Now you must be already aware of the fact that the Harappan script is still undeciphered. What is the script basically? Do you have alphabets here? Not really you are having it is called logographic. So you are having 375 to 400 signs without and there is a complete absence of alphabet. Where are you finding these signs? The signs are found in they are inscribed in seals, in tablets, in clay tablets, in tools, in pots, in jars. Some goblets have been found uh, from Harappa and Mohenjadaro where these seal impressions have been found. So you can make out how interesting this uh, 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 re uh, uh, reading of the script would be because that is going to throw light on more aspects of the Harappan civilization about which we do not know. When you are finding it on a seal what do you think it could designate? Mainly perhaps the name or and designation of the owner. When you are having a pictorial emblem then one perhaps gets to know more about the possibly lineage ancestry or the social origins of that particular individual. So although the script remains undeciphered but you would agree that writing is one of the most momentous discoveries of mankind and there you have that thing was already there in the Harappan civilization. Now the next aspect that I would like to dwell on is of course Harappan art. What are the objects that uh, immediately come to mind when we are talking about art? Art can be defined in many ways. The modern definition is simple. It is an expression of a creative skill. It indeed is an expression of a skill, but in ancient times it may have been a livelihood for some. When we are talking about art, we find that animals form the chief items of representational art. However, you do have depictions of foliage and pottery. 
carvings of animals like uh, tiger, rhinoceros, bull, elephants have been seen in intaglias on steatite seals and they are really examples, illustrations of brilliant craftsmanship. Animal figurants have been found, but they are not of very good workmanship, mainly in clay and fios. Uh, the bull forms the most, the most, uh, uh, pop, the most uh, important item among these clay figurants. Apart from these, some bronze and stone artifacts have been found, made of bronze and stone. And here you find that uh, you get some beautiful examples of buffalo and goat. The rendering of people in clay or fios was not as great as seen in stone or steatite. Uh, you, I have already mentioned about the priest king in some other context, which is basically a figure connected with the elite class in a seated posture. So, the style is very static and formal and can definitely be marked by the very superior craftsmanship. Then we come across the famous dancing girl and several animal figurants which are um, illustrations of the lost wax process. Apart from these, a small corroded uh, female figurine has been found, but there is more stiffness in physique in this figuring that you are not seeing in the beautiful dancing girl. Most of these items have been found from Mohenjo-daro, but the context of the dancing girl is not really known. Now, after discussing art. Another thing that immediately comes to mind would be religious aspe aspects because we will see when we will talk about religion that how these two might be linked. Now, how does one talk about religious system of a Bronze Age economy like that of the Harappas? Sometimes it is a problem when you are trying to find the roots of Hinduism in some of these objects. For example, the haunt deity surrounded by animals, which is uh, one of the most notable examples that has been found. And this deity, this uh, so called figure has been interpreted as prototype of Shiva as Pashupati and sitting in a yogic posture. Now, such uh, interpretations cannot be accepted anymore. In fact, Shirin Ratnagar is pointing out that such figures may have been just associated with the religious system, but you cannot trace back Hinduism to such figures. Another important aspect that needs to be studied when you are considering the religious system of any society is the nature of burial, the nature of after death uh, rituals, rites and rituals which might be connected to beliefs in afterlife. The Harappans generally buried their dead. We also come across some post cremation or symbolic burials that is uh, pots and uh, burials basically where you are not finding the, uh, the various bodily parts. And we see that when the Harappans were buried, the head pointed to the north and you are finding one is coming across various grave goods associated with the burial like pots, um, ornaments, tools etcetera. So, these have bear some kind of significance if one was to talk about afterlife. Now, very rarely it is very difficult in fact, it is quite abstract to talk about uh, religious symbols concepts from uh, depictions on pots, seals, um, uh, different kinds of tools, etc. It cannot be denied that Indus civilization had some kind of a belief system, but linking it to any present religion may not be warranted. We simply do not have sufficient data for it, and we should not look at the artifacts of the Harappan civilization from our perspective. They may have had other significance which we are not yet aware. There are numerous figurines which have been interpreted as mother goddess by some. However, the nature of these figurines and the context and their context 
uh, has prompted a few other scholars to say that perhaps there is nothing very strictly religious about these figures, nor can we really determine whether they were used as votive figurines. Now, you are coming across some of these figures seen in seals and various other cases, where you have a combination of the human body and animal head, tail and hoofs or a combination of animal and human torsos. So, they have uh, we think they have some kind of a significance when it comes to interpreting the past, uh, the beliefs of a uh, of an ancient society. Now, apart from these uh, examples, you are also coming across some structures like uh, some architectural uh, which, which show real architectural splendor like the great path. This is possibly uh, this was a seat of uh, ceremonial and public worship. Now, other than such ceremonial seats of ceremonial and public worship, there may have been the presence of local cults which may have had their seats below some trees. However, there is no archaeological evidence for that. Now, apart from these, seven fire altars have been found at the site of Kalibangan. These have cavities of uh, which show ash and terracotta cakes. There is a clay column rising from the center, drain, well and some bones have been found from these places. So, it is surmised that some kind of ritual were, took place in these fire altars which show a combination of ablution, ritual, sacrifice etcetera. The most interesting part of course, is the nature of depiction of animals. We have already seen there is a wide uh, depiction of animals and seals and various other material objects. What does the depiction of animals really mean? We see that apart from bulls, most of the animals which are represented, they are wild animals, tiger, rhinoceros, gharial, elephant etcetera. So, they may have had some shamanistic association. We also see that uh, there we, we uh, have reference to these horned mythical beast which is appearing in many of the seals and they are open to multiple interpretations. So, there are these various uh, seals where you find the inscription on one side, seals, tablets, inscriptions on one side and on the opposite side there is this mythical haunt figure dressed in leaves or depiction of some animal and these can also be used as reference points to understand the religious beliefs, the religious system of the Harappans. Certain material items which perhaps had some religious association are these ivory rods with dot and circle uh, incisions, talismans, some of the shell ornaments could have been used as talismans. Then there the depiction of drum on some of the seals, cylindrical, cylindrical perforated jars. So, these are some of the items which may have had some religious association. You also come across this uh, another kind of horned figure with pigtails sitting in the people tree and this could have been some kind of a spirit uh, who had some association with the religious beliefs. We have already looked at some of these uh, mythical creatures, the so called uh, Pashupati or uh, figure in yogic posture. So, these various figures can be uh, can be taken as representing past beliefs and customs. You also have these uh, uh, various um, uh, figures of fish, animal motives I have already mentioned and all these possibly formed a part of a religious system which was primitive or semi primitive and uh, this is how we can actually talk about the Harappan religious system a little too abstract, but there is nonetheless a lot of evidence which does show some indications to past belief in customs. We have already talked about the priest king. 
Now, here one thing to be noted is such labels like the priest king were used by colonial archaeologists and they are actually reflective of the European attitude towards the Orient because this might not have been a priest king at all. If there was such a complex mechanism in a society, there definitely must have been some form of social organization. How was it organized in Indus society? From whatever idea you have formed about the Harappan civilization, one thing is clear that there are, there is evidence of for example, in the uh, nature of organization of space of some of the cities, there is evidence of some kind of difference. So, people have, scholars have talked about social segregation based on differences in urban space, like you have the houses with elaborate facilities and the so called coolie lines. Then you have the material evidence of various distinctive seals which scholars have interpreted as evidence of private property. Now, if a social organization based on some hierarchical arrangement, based on some class segregation existed, then it must have operated through some controlling authority. And there we uh, have to talk about the political status of the Harappan system. Some scholars have said that there was a state, others have said that no it was a proto-state. So, there are, there is still a wide ranging debate on that. But what is clear is some kind of a controlling authority is seen in maybe the town planning in the way that no encroachments were made, were allowed to be made on streets in the very well planned drainage system. A controlling mechanism is seen in the uh, widespread uh, use of uh, distinctive seals in the, uh, in the script in uh, which still remains undeciphered in the universal style of pottery despite regional variations in the universal system of weights in the standard size of the mud mud brick and the fired bricks. So, as to how this political control, how this, uh, how the mechanism, how it worked, we do not know. But there was some kind of a controlling authority and this is the kind of material evidence that archaeologists talk about. So, when we are talking about political control, archaeologists do not, cannot say anything about which was the capital. We come across citadels in about 15 to 20 of the Harappan sites. So, possibly there was a hierarchy of seats of power among the towns, but beyond that nothing can be said with a lot of certainty. Shireen Ratnagar has talked about a political system which was based on tribal foundations. That was the foundation on which the Harappan central, centralized controlling authority was based. However, unless the script is deciphered, nothing more conclusive can be said about the nature of polity or the social organization. So, we have seen architectural patterns, the Indus script, art and religion and also the social organization. While we can make many conjectures, unless the script is deciphered, nothing conclusive can be arrived at about this great civilization.